The production of this video was made possible by donors to the Orchestration Online Patreon Initiative. Please consider adding your support to the creation of free educational internet resources by visiting our Patreon page linked below. This is your orchestration tutor, Thomas Goss, and let me tell you what a strange four months it's been. Uh, some of my community out there may know that I have been dealing with long COVID symptoms, dizziness, fatigue, brain fog, um, and now I've got a touch of tinnitus on top of that. Um, so. So yeah, and that's been going on for a few months, and I'm starting to get a little bit better, but um, yeah, I took a little vacation to sort of clear my head, and it worked. But, you know, I've still got symptoms, and uh, it's still going to be a little while before I am back in uh, fighting fit, as they say down here. And uh, on top of all of that, I have got to travel back to the United States because my mother is very, very sick, so i got to go see to her. So I just, I'm not getting the time that I need to provide some of my planned uh, educational materials to Patreon, to the community, to the YouTube channel um, in the way that I wanted to, all right? So this is a little stopgap. Recently, it was requested that uh, that I explain, you know, or, or, or have a little lesson or tutorial uh, about uh, some of my recent crossover arrangements that were recorded and performed by the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra along with Signature Choir in a concert series called Mana Moana. So I'm going to make three shorter videos. Like They're each going to be about, say, 10 to 12 minutes long. And uh, I'll release them over the next few days before the end of the month. And, you know, I'll actually be in transit while I'm doing this. And so hopefully I'll get time to edit everything the way that I need to. But anyhow, uh, so forgive, you know, sounds of um, my neighbor. I think he's working on his roof. <laughs> so you might, you might hear some pounding and wrenching. Um, and uh, you might hear a little bit of machine noise as well. I think there's another neighbor who is mowing or something okay but just bear with me this is kind of the best i can do and i've really been itching to talk about this um so so we will jump into this score and we'll look over some of the best parts and i'll talk about like you know like how i arrange certain things and you know how i approach certain things uh and kind of kept things simple when they needed to be and and really um you know added a lot of texture and complexity where it was appropriate okay but some of the things that are in this in this series of videos are um you know they're, they're just like little minutiae but like they make um they make a lot of difference so the song that we orchestrated was uh, siwele o a pacifiki and it is a pacifica um choral number uh, written by the uh, queen of Tonga and the song is about how she visits many different islands but when it all comes down to it Tonga is the most beautiful as <laughs> you know <laughs> and uh, you know I mean you can't blame somebody for liking their their uh, homeland the most and I mean I have to say that I love New Zealand the most so and I've you know I've been to 
a couple of different islands around a new uh, around um the pacific island but you know i just pacific sorry pacific oceans and but like i just always feel like new zealand is the best so i can i can completely empathize with that viewpoint so um let's start off here um at the beginning um so you know some of this stuff was added by me like a bright morning you know i just felt that you know the, her song sort of starts off with you know talking about you know the beautiful colors and the um the um sort of the winds making you know when she says something like when the doubled winds make a whistling sound and i just thought doubled winds i've got to um i've got to expand on that so naturally i put in uh these um these doubled trills here and you know i mean to be absolutely perfectly precise i probably should have done this in um in separate voices and then put like a trill for each voice right so trill over the top trill trill marking or trill line under the bottom but you know this this sort of worked you know just for the crossover scoring you know there was it the meaning was conveyed to the conductor and and so on and i was the copyist so i wasn't too worried about it um notice just you know asking lunga you know i just like make it make very very long in this uh fermata here so, you know, doubling the flutes, or sorry, pairing up the flutes, I should say, pairing up the oboes in harmony, which I felt this, this turned out really, really well. Uh, and then trading off to clarinet, right? And then every all of the groups coming together with the bassoons kicking in here with a bit of bass. And that is just setting things up for uh, for the choir, right? Who are going to jump in here at four after A. Now, notice, like, you might think, well, four after eight, or three, excuse me, four after eight, shouldn't be five after, right? Shouldn't it be one, two, three, four, go? But that's because a lot of, um, a lot of folk songs in general, and a lot of uh, Pacifica uh, choral music, like, almost always starts with a pickup, right? So this is the pickup to the downbeat. So it really is four, uh, four bars till the downbeat on, or the yeah the downbeat on like really where you would consider the music to sort of start so so i could have put the rehearsal mark here too but this is really where the music changes right see at the beginning we've got um you know uh 100 uh beats per minute and you know here i i change to swing right so it's the same it's the same tempo but it's um just you know has a different feel completely different feel um here we've got uh, you know, just a little bit of tremolo and then you know push to mezzo forte and then soft and then pushing upwards to a um, to a pausa just or a comma some might people might think of and then you know molto ritardando leading to the downbeat where the beat starts so let's talk about the the percussion here a little bit uh, I've got a drum set with brushes right so I just really want this to be more backgroundy and I've got the Pau Malu, which is a, a, a Polynesian um, bass drum. Okay, and it like notice like I'm I'm not putting it on the downbeat. Like you you, you can use it as a you know you can use it almost like a kick drum, uh, but you can also use it to like enhance the you know the beat of other percussion instruments. And here I've got a drum kit, right? And just like this is just the standard. Uh, layout that you'll see in Sibelius and Dorico and other things like that. You know, other they pretty much decided that the uh, the bottom space is kick, and the third space up, or you say the upper middle space, is um, is a snare. Uh, here I've got you know a little bit of side stick, right? So that's that's indicated by the X, um, which is one of the reasons why I feel that like you know people using X note heads for like everything to do with percussion is you know it, it makes a problem for like drum set notation because like you know what is a <laughs> what's a side stick and what is a what's just regular just a regular um, strike and notice that I have this is sort of my penchant uh, and that is to um, and stuff like this where I've got like a pattern on the um, on the hats 
uh, I notate the uh, the kick and the snare in second voice, and sometimes, um, as you'll see, like in sometimes like some of the fills and so on. Uh, and it's totally this is totally readable by any professional drummer. Um, that you know there are people who are real purists about that, and they'll say like, no, no, it all has to be in first voice and blah blah blah, and that's the most easy thing to read and so on and so forth. And let me tell you, I mean, I've worked with pro drummers in tons of different situations. Uh, you know, pop, jazz, you know, like, and, and whenever the, whenever the aspect of, you know, of like first and second voice, you know, in the way that I've got it here, or whether it was just like all first voice, I didn't really get a strong preference from them. You know, some of them said, well, you know, I've been sort of raised like re seeing, reading everything in first voice or, you know, or, you know, or like either way doesn't really matter. So, um, all right, so notice like I've got some, I've got this beat set up. So, all right, so so this song is like what they would call Phi Kava, all right? So it is like a shuffle beat, okay? And the, the, um, the manuscript that was given to me, um, like the source, the manuscript source, was actually written in 6-8 time, <laughs> right? Uh, so, you know, you'd see all this, so this would be, you know... Um, so this might be like if you were to count it, it would be like, you know, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Do you see what I'm saying? And I just changed it all to swing. And then, you know, and that actually helped um, some of the vocal or the choir, choir arrangers I was working with. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a way easier way of writing it out. Uh, but they they didn't write out the manuscript. That was given to me from like a, a it was copied out from a... Um, like a, a folk song book. Okay, so so it's a it's got to be a shuffle beat and not reggae. Okay, so reggae there's there's shuffle reggae. There's like you know there's reggae with swing, but this is not it. And it's interesting. There is a version of this by a um, uh, by this one performer. He does, and what he did was he just he recorded everything, and then he had two different drum tracks. So he had one drum track, uh, or drums and bass, right? So he had one drum and bass track where they're they are playing an accompaniment of reggae, and then they did one where they're they they mark it as fai kava, right? So in other words, like a shuffle. Um, and so like it's really important to like to try to get the vibe of that. Um, of uh, you know of of where the impulse is where the stresses are right so just really always listen to professional drummers always like you know if you are if you are arranging something like this where the orchestra has got to supply the drummer and the drummer has got to accompany the crossover artists right so you just really want to make sure that the um that it is that it is really feels right, right? And the the percussionist who played this is that was the principal percussionist of the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra, one of the greatest orchestras in the world. And, you know, he did his homework, right? <laughs> he just really made it sound right. Now notice this is a shuffle with the stress in the middle, right? So it's like a you know, uh it's boom boom so it's like it's got the you know, it's not boom do you see what I'm saying? So it's got the, it's basically like, you know, <clears throat> it's like kick, snare, kick, snare, right? And that keeps this from getting too, uh, too bouncy, too lively. So uh, notice I've got some really simple doubling of bassoons and um, lower strings. And then we've got the, we've got the horns just, you know, second third and fourth horns just kind of playing the off beats occasionally now once this completely sets things up we have our choir come in and notice i've just you know like a, a lot of times you'll see in choral music that there will be accompaniment of the choir with brass with strings with even with wind sometimes 
and here I've chosen to make it as lush as possible right and that really helps the meaning of the words I wish I had time in this video to like really go over what the meaning of the text was but here you can see the uh, the first horn uh, playing the melody you know the 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 top of the of the chorale with the singers right and that is notice like I'm not worrying about like marking down, marking up, and so on. Everybody's playing mezzo forte, right? Now, sometimes, sometimes when you have instruments that sort of sit on each other and won't merge, uh, or one will just outplay the other, you need to do a little bit of balancing of the dynamics. But in this case, this is exactly what's needed, right? I know, I know that like pushing up to B flat here, A flat, and so on. This is going to go up from mezzo forte to forte at ver at the very least, right? Um, but the thing is that the choir will just really sing over all of that and you'll hear that in the recording they're just they they're not it doesn't really blow them out of the water right okay now um, I don't want I, do, I try not to do any part to death right so uh, when I get a chance uh, and a new verse starts uh, I'll just, I'll I will go for a new character to that verse all right, so here we've got um, the chorale continuing in strings and and choir, and the uh, the trombones taking over the kind of shuffle, you know, da 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 da, da, da kind of thing, right? And but we still have a lot of other elements are very similar. Uh, the the bass is a little bit more involved, right? And we've got uh, harmonizing with the top two voices. Uh, we've got oboes and clarinets, um, a due, both parts a due in unison, right? Which gives us about as much power as the, as the single horn, right? Um, just like, like in that, that upper register where it's going to be playing louder. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it's like verse one, verse two, and then, um, it's, it's kind of hard to put the, word chorus on this right it's almost more like a refrain um do, do you know what i mean uh but it's it's like the chorus is sort of like like um you know a refrain and then another touch of a verse right it's um I mean, you know it's, it's more of a folk song structure than it is really like a you know a pop song with you know that is uh, can be a little bit more rigid All right so you know so here you're seeing um so I set up like staccato trumpet chords, right? Um, and that, you know, and then offbeat to that, we've got the clarinet family, you know, going da, 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 da. And here we just have the, you know, the trumpets going chonk, 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 chonk. And I feel that this is, this is a really, really great um, combination because the, the trumpets sort of keep everybody on the beat coming together in all of these groups, the, the strings also being uh, playing along with the clarinets, so you know we have the sort of back and forth. You know, uh, trumpet winds and strings, trumpet winds and strings, trumpet winds and strings, and then they all go dun 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 together, right? So it all it ties everything, and it's really supportive of um, of what's going on in uh, both the um, both the choir and the rhythm section, right? So, so you know, you, you kind of want to think about your rhythm section, right? Um, here is an example of it being used just sort of sparingly, judiciously, I feel, um, with pizzicato in our uh, lower strings and uh, bass trombone and tuba uh, playing tenuto staccato. So they're, they're going unga. So they're going unga, unga. Unga, 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 and uh, that is along with pluck, 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 pluck. Right? See, so you've got the, so the, so this really is powerful. It's almost like a, it almost sounds like a bass guitar. Right? Um, now notice the, <laughs> we've gone to a uh, really simple uh, ride. You know. Tsh, tsh, and notice that, like, I, I, if anything, I've like really, really eased back on the pattern of the, um, of the drums, right? So it's you know, da 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 da, 
da da bum 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 right which is <laughs> like it's really it's it's very very much laid back as much as i could possibly make it right and then here i throw in you know i've i've had just a little bit of fill here and there and i've taken out the pa umalu for this and then as you can see this kind of goes back to some similar things that we saw before now you know i could continue on and you know talk about the you know verse two how that is you know that basically it takes the um uh, it takes what's happening in the choir and it elevates it in the winds uh you know up an octave right and so this you've got this big beautiful chirpy choir here and we've got this ba 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 da happening in horns and strings so on and and just like a guide here for the sopranos ba 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 bum and so on right um so i mean i could i could go into it in enormous detail but like it's basically you can sort of see that the formula is set by the first verse and chorus right so some of these choices are different you know you can see the um kind of the back and forth between some of the material being realized uh, of the choir being realized in the horns with a reaction uh, of the winds and strings working together i think that's very very effective um and then you know the chorus having more of that back and forth um between the uh winds and the and the trumpets right but then more soaring strings right here so i'm just like kind of covering some of the other features and then kind of coming back to that more elevated kind of thing here so i tell you what why don't we stop the video here and <clears throat> i will uh play some of the um some of this orchestration along to the uh to the choir recording as it was made by the uh by the new zealand symphony orchestra with signature choir and then we will pick it up right here at the poco ritardando in the next video all right and it's just really great to be making content again for you guys i just i just have felt so um detached from it just just by all of the stuff that's going on my health uh, my mother's situation and a bunch of other things that have been happening um also uh with me personally which i can't really talk about yet but i'll discuss in a um probably in a few months once things kind of go forward but it's nothing it's it's no big crisis it's a good step all right okay so um so thanks everybody for holding on and and you know and i hope that this uh, this video is is very useful to everybody who you know you might be interested in doing crossover orchestration because it's a a really big part of what orchestras commission nowadays all right see you soon
Te quita, así otro leijo. 